All right, this very short video is meant to demonstrate a watershed segmentation of powders. So I'm going to um, start sc screen share and <clears throat> I will, I'm, I'm working on a very small data set just to simplify and to show what we, how the functions work. So as you scroll through it, you see this is a powder data set, which um, we don't want to see only a slice view we want to also see the 3d view so i'll just briefly make it a quad view and show you this is a cropped data set so it's not an entire scan it's a very small section but it's enough to demonstrate watershed so how the watershed segmentation works is or the reason we do it is we want to separate touching objects so these these two particles for example seem to be digitally touching and we want to calculate the properties for each separately. So we want to separate them in a segmentation. So the starting point is a normal segmentation. Segmentation tab, define range, upper Otsu. The upper Otsu is an automated thresholding method to, to um, I, um, segment or classify voxels as material or background. And we can do a similar thing with lower Otsu and add to new. So now we have a very simple segmentation. This is particles, sorry. <laughs> and this is background. So what we want to do is um, for the watershed, we going, the watershed segmentation does a um, special filtering and uh, um, um, finding, uh, separating these interface regions. As you see at the moment, these are touching. So what we need to do is we need to um, provide seed points for this um, in a multi ROI. So we need all particles segmented separately. So let me just put off the background for a minute and put this define range off. So what we do is we take the particles and we, um, the one way to do it is to erode it, erode away. And then we have um, seed points within most particles. And if you scroll, you see actually they are in all of them. This is one way to provide seed points. The other way, which is um, recommended because it works slightly better, is to take the background and then make a, a distance map of everything which is not in between away, away from background. So you right click and create a distance map. So what this does is it creates uh, values uh, with the highest values being furthest away from your region of interest that you've selected. So the, what we're going to use this for is a segmentation, which will become visible here. If we make upper Otsu and um, in this way, we are having, for example, these were separate, these were touching before, now they are not. Let's take a, a case, um, if we scroll through here, we would like still these particles here to not be touching. So we're going to make, uh, we manually change this threshold slightly uh, upwards without remove, without losing um, the values within the particles. So now we create this, this is a distance mapped particles. And what we can do is we can add the background uh, to this. So we're trying to create input now for the watershed. So we're gonna put all the particles and the background as seed points into a single thing. We're going to make a union of that. So we're going to combine them into a new region of interest. Let's just call this the seed for watershed. And what we what we need for a watershed now, if we put all these regions off, just to simplify, we now have particles and background as a seed with a data underneath it. Um, what we need, we need to create a multi ROI in order for the watershed to work properly. What this means is you've got a different color, each, each item is separate, each separate item has a different color. So what we do now is we're going to create a computer watershed. So it's right click, compute watershed on the image channel. It computes a Sobel filter, which makes highlights the edges between objects and then calculates the separated objects from that. What we will have as a result is a watershedded um, multi-ROI and 
each item, each particle will be having separate values. And it's done a good job. What we can do is we can now go, this is now actually the result. We can rename it. So we have now different sections here. For example, the biggest um, count is the background. So we can put that off or just the visualization off, or we can just remove it entirely. So now we have data for each individual particle in the spreadsheet here. It's not calculated, nothing is calculated for it yet. What you can do is you can calculate, for example, the, using the scalar generator, you can calculate volumes and so on. Let's do that just for a demo here. We, we, can, we only need to calculate here volume and let's say sphericity. It's a small data set, so it's quite fast. If you have a, quite a big data set, that might, might take a bit longer. Let's look at this result in 3D. So we have quite a good result. Um, and what we, we're not viewing it according to any cut uh, measurement yet. Let's classify according to volume. There we go. And according to sphericity, it looks like this. And what we can do is we can change the color coding here. I like to use the temperature, whoops the temperature color map so there we go that's how you analyze particles and uh, uh, separate them according to a watershed segmentation there are other ways to use the watershed tools in dragonfly uh, but this is a simple workflow to separate your particles i hope you find that useful and see you next time <laughs>